Hello, this is Aaron Kadju. I am one of the co-directors of the documentary film series in the works about the unsolved New Bedford Highway murders of 1988. Some of you may have been following us on social media for these last few years and seen the various trailers that we have released to promote this project. We are happy to report at this point that we are very close to completing this project and we are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. There are still a couple of aspects of this case that we'd like to learn more about and that is the purpose of today's vlog. One of the unfortunate victims in this case was a 26-year-old woman from New Bedford named Mary Rose Santos. Mary Rose was last seen in the early morning hours of July 16th in downtown New Bedford. Uh, months passed and her skeletal remains were eventually found on the southbound side of Route 88 in the nearby town of Westport. She was the eighth of the nine victims that were eventually found and her remains were discovered by two children that were playing in the woods perpendicular to the highway. What followed became one of the most mysterious aspects of the entire highway murders investigation. Right after her body was found, the district attorney at the time, a man named Ronald Pina, informed the general public through the press that two weeks before this body was found, his office had received an anonymous letter from somebody saying that if a body was ever found on Route 88 in Westport, that the individual would feel comfortable coming forward to the district attorney, identifying themselves and providing them with more information pertaining to the case. The, the information in that letter is important, and I need that person to come forward at this point. So if they're listening and if they're reading papers and radio, they may be a crucial piece of this whole thing. Some newspapers even suggested that the letter writer had more information pertaining to some of the other victims. And Ronald Pena was hopeful that the information that the letter writer was going to provide would help police pin down whoever this last person was that these women were with before they disappeared. And lo and behold, a couple of days later, the alleged letter writer allegedly comes forward and identifies themselves. But then Ronald Pena would not answer any questions after that point in time. The first thing I would do, no matter what, is to keep that person's anonymity. That individual has been spoken to and will be spoken to by this office in different locations so that uh, if you plant your cameras outside, you won't find that person here. The letter in Westport was very frustrating for reporters. Ron Pina makes an announcement to all the reporters. The information is widely publicized, and then nothing. He would never elaborate beyond that there was a letter, and we would grill him in press conferences and whatnot and ask about it and fail to get any information. So I have no idea who wrote the letter. We haven't been able to find out from anybody close to this case who this person was and what information was contained in the letter. As a matter of fact, we interviewed Ronald Pena's chief investigator, Robert St. Jean, for this documentary film series. Robert St. Jean was somebody that Ronald Pena shared all of the information pertaining to this case with. And this is what Robert St. Jean had to say about this alleged letter. I know very little except, you know, I heard that there was a letter, you know, that it specified a location, all locations in Westport. If that person did meet with Pena, uh, he never shared that with me, and, and he shared, you know, as far as I know, all the information with me. And if he did meet that person, maybe he made a determination that there was no validity to, to the information that was provided, if any. I, I don't know. So one of the big questions is, does this letter exist? because the only person who actually confirmed the letter's existence and who claimed to have actually seen the letter is the district attorney himself. The other question is, if this letter did exist, how was somebody able to determine that a body was gonna be found down on Route 88 unless they had actually seen something down on Route 88 or unless they knew the person who was involved in these murders? Keep in mind that at this point in time, seven of the nine girls had been found before Mary Rose Santos was found on an 80, down on 88. And at that point in time, the bodies had only been found in two primary clusters, one of which was a cluster of three bodies up on Route 140 in Freetown, the other of which was a cluster of four bodies found around the Reed Road exit off of 195. So somebody just took a guess that a body was going to pop up on, on 88. I mean, if this letter did exist, this person must have seen something. And why is it that nobody that we've talked to knows anything about this? There's people close to the investigation that don't even remember this letter existing. I mean, we're talking about something that made the front page of the paper and was on every local news station that was covering this case. So we're asking the general public, if there's anybody out there that knows more about this alleged letter writer or the alleged letter itself, 
We urge you to contact us through our website, highwaymurders.com. You can contact us through email, through the website, or you can call our hotline at 1-508-505-INFO. That's 1-508-505-INFO. Uh, we would really like to learn more about this aspect of the case, and we look forward to hearing from anybody that can help us out. Thank you.